This is my second episode, and this time I'm going to bring my friend Sammy. He came here from Congo in 2014, and he's essentially going to share his story um, from Congo and then some things he experienced in the U.S., and I think it's a very interesting story, and here he is. What up, my guy? I'm just chilling, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. That's, That's good, good, man. That's good. Nothing to complain. Mm, that's good. Uh, how was your day? Pretty good. I mean, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Normal Friday here, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Nice outside, but uh, I'm just enjoying it. That's good. Me too. Yeah, like, yeah. The weather, it, it just seems perfect. You exactly. Know I mean? You know, it's November. Mm -hmm. What is it like out there, man? It's, it's like spring or summer or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm going right there. <laughs> like, the weather's been so weird lately, too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Warm, cold. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's New England. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that we treasure here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of the good weathers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned to me earlier that you were taking a quiz. How, how was it? Um, it was it was pretty easy. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of studying and yeah. reading and whatnot. So I just felt very prepared. For yeah, it. that's pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. I, I like to go in school being like to go take a quiz, being prepared. But if I'm not prepared, man, I'm gonna fail. Mm. Like I'm 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 a type of person that like um pre like write my essay pre write my um question so I can do better in exams and mm -hmm. if I don't have them bro it's well going I mean it's a good strategy honestly yeah. um, it's pretty good um, so you, you came from Congo in 2014 mm -hmm. what was the day in life actually like in Congo well <laughs> um, back home like man life in general it's it's good it's easy you'll, you'll always see people happy there was not a lot of like resources like uh, financially like um or no government support really if you think about it you were just there like on your own and on my case i felt it i you know i found it easier to live back there than actually living here why like back home you're always happy you you like you don't have to worry about like social media don't have to worry about how people think about you you know and but here like you you you, you go through here there's not did like a lot of like psycho like um what am i trying to say here in, in america people like suffer not like physically but mentally and emotionally yes that's all i'm trying to say mm. i, I yeah. see that too like especially on this college campus you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. all the schoolwork, um the jobs mm -hmm. and just people just get so stressed and oftentimes i see them attach themselves to a lot of bad habits and then eventually it kind of wrecks their lives. Um, how come you did not get pulled in that direction? Uh, it's it, it's called dignity, and uh, it's it's like me when, when I came to America, I I realized that like I have a lot to learn mm -hmm. when when I first came to America, and I embraced a lot of things, and I embraced a lot of people. I embraced pretty much everyone in my school, and they embraced me. But what helped me to thrive was staying true to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, in in sculpture, it's so easy to get lost. But if you know who you are and um, what you think that God is calling you to do on this earth, you will succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me going. So how did you actually stay true to yourself? Like what strategies? Yeah. So it is easier in a way. Some, some Sometimes people say it's harder to stay true to yourself, but I'll say it is easy. The reason is to prevent what other people think about you. To stop, to block thoughts from other people, from inching your head, from, because the moment you start comparing yourself to other people, that's the moment you lose yourself. The mo your, your success should not be measured by how you compare yourself to other people's success. Mm. That's how you're gonna stay true to yourself. You try and do that just about in every area. Of in, life. yes, in every area, even on soccer, uh, social life, me and social life, bro, I'm well going. Mm. Yeah. It must not be easy, you know what I mean? Especially yeah. like when you see your friends mm -hmm. just doing all these different things. Like it's tough being an outcast and you just embrace that so easily. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's not easy, it's harder, but you, you have to, to think about it though. I came from like nothing, like not what I mean, nothing, nothing. Like I was a worthless person back home in, in, in terms of like resources, but like beside all the, the power and the, and the cultural, like tri tribal, like leaders that w we had, that, that was it. Uh, other than that, we were like, I was nothing. And when I came into America, there were so many opportunities like in front of me and I should not like, um, 
take this opportunity for granted to go with what other people are are, are doing or are saying. Mm-hmm. So that's basically what helped me in a way. I don't know if I, I answer your question correctly or oh, or you not. did like yeah. the opportunities because yeah. yeah. in Congo, like there's really not much there. I mean, the school systems. No, 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 no. And even the government, they take advantage of civilian men. They take they, they they do take advantage of you, really bad, which is not good because government are supposed to protect people. Not to harm them, you know, mm-hmm. or not to steal from them. In Haiti, we see similar issue. The presidents, yeah, they just don't really care about the people. Like, if they get money to help build yeah. the cities and towns, the government oftentimes just keeps a lot of that money for themselves. The yeah. Clinton Foundation they yeah. raised billions of dollars for Haiti after the earthquake, mm-hmm. and hardly any of it went to Haiti. Um, a lot of it, the president kind of yeah. kept in the Clinton Foundation. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fraud there too. Yeah. So. Presidents can really harm economies badly. That that's true. That that, that is the, the reason why like I'm like into politics. You know, I'm like I'm a, a really like into politics just because of of seeing uh, these high respected leaders taking advantage of, of the people and pretty much the similar like, stuff that you faced uh, in in Haiti back home to we do like people would come and get, um there would be like non profit organization that came that come to help people. And the government, like they do, take advantage of, of those type of stuff, and they use uh, they use their money for their own gain. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, they, they do give some money to people, but they they use it for their own benefit. Yeah, that's not good. And you yeah. said that you plan to go back to Congo someday to run for office. Yeah, <laughs> that must be. I mean, that's a big goal, man. It is. I mean, it is scary, but um, you know, it's it's called it's um, dedication and ambition. Um, but you know, I am, I, when I look myself in the mirror, like I kept telling myself that, um, I am quiet for I am in a mission. My circle is small for a reason. So I try to hang out with people that have the same ambition. I try to limit myself from interacting with people that may lead me astray, that, that may lead me like, uh, to uh, like into wrong paths. Mm. Yeah, and, and that's so easy. To, I mean, I, I see it all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like good people, they like they just start hanging out with yeah. people with the wrong mindsets, yeah. bad habits, and eventually, slowly but surely, they kind of start following in those footsteps. And yeah. it's just over time, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't notice it in the moment, uh-huh. but eventually, bro, you will notice how it starts to affect you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's life in a way. You know, life. It doesn't just. Uh, happen like that it's like it's a journey of different series mm-hmm. so you just have to capitalize on the good and that's what i try to do every single day whenever i see good i recognize this whenever i see bad i try to avoid it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that that must not be easy because like it's everywhere man like, it is yeah it, it's like a constant reminder in your mind mm-hmm. not to go down that path um if you do not have it in your mind, like I can see how people just go down the wrong path. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But coming to the US, though, you did not really speak English that well. <laughs> no, 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 but but I would say though, I mean, even though my English was bad when I first came to America, back home I was Wagwan. You know what I mean? I was the Wagwan. I I I knew how to say hi. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say what's up. No, no what's up? I'm not. I I knew how to say how are you. I didn't know how to say what's up. What's up? I, I gave, I learned it here. Uh, I pretty much only know like the basic English. Mm-hmm. But in the back home, that was a big deal because my, my country is a, a French speaking country. And if you can speak English, you gotta, the ladies that are like around you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And by coming to America, not, a, not a being able to speak English actually helped me in a way because there were always people around me. Like, and being a black person from, the only African from uh, Congo to go to my school, it made, it made me way more popular. So there were always people around me trying to help me, navigate me, like, to, to do good in a way. Mm, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, did you experience, like, a lot of stereotypes, per se, in the school system? Yeah, I mean, every minority, um, they always... Um, feel that same, that, that sense of like being casted out or being like feeling different, you know. Mm. I mean, when I came, I felt that way, but it was not happening. Or I was just being blind, you know. Uh, me like, I, as I said earlier, like, I tried to 
see the good on people than seeing the bad. Um, and uh, when I came, I, I, I mean, it was definitely some steroid stereotype, but I just didn't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I you just, just stayed focused on it. Mm, I, I just stayed focused on my school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. And doing the schoolwork, mm-hmm. like if your English was not that good, like how did you uh, push through all that? Uh, yeah, actually my first, my first semester, I took like seven classes. So then three of them, three of them were all English. And math, like math just comes natural, natural to me. Like, just like, just like Donald Trump on smart. <laughs> no, you're funny, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you like get a lot of help at home in the school system yes, to help you? And at school, um, I had one professor, you no, know, one teacher, as people from high, from high school, one teacher, like he was good. He was like, um, in charge of all international students and he did help me to uh, improve my grammar. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to improve my English in general, um, which was good. I mean, I spent most of my time in, in his room, and he was like a friend, like to me, right now. That's a lot of dedication, yeah. man. Cause yeah. a, a lot of people, man, if mm-hmm. they were in your shoes, man. They yeah. they just would not go out, out of the way to understand yeah. it because it's a lot of stress. Yeah. Like, did you experience a lot of stress, like trying to adapt to the school culture and the environment? Um, no. I was always happy dancing, <laughs> bro. Like I danced a lot back in high school. Like in every corner, you would not see me standing. That I can either I was either dancing or laughing with people. And after school, I got to do soccer field, uh, soccer practice, and I was like one of the best uh, soccer player on the pitch. Mm-hmm. And the better I do, the better the less stress I have. Huh. So like, how did you like deal with the stressors of the school and just the whole culture? Because it's because it's all very much different compared to Congo. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I was not that much stretched out when I was in school and stuff. I mean, I mean, there were moments where like I had I had to stay up late to actually finish my my schoolwork. But uh, when I get to school, I was always happy because I had a good like support system like around me, and that's something that I, I will be grateful forever. I mean, some of some of those guys we still talk, and some of those uh, females that we, we still talk like. That helped me like to improve my, my English, which was uh, a big deal, you know. As a black black kid, the only black African kid at that school, like, and having that strong support system around me was uh, something that I'll never forget, you know. Mm, it kind of reminds me of my story. Like when I came here, mm-hmm. it was tough, you know. Mm-hmm. My English it just yeah. was not that good. Yeah. In second grade, I'd cry in my classes because the yeah. math was just too hard. But the teachers, yeah, uh, my parents, and yeah. the people in the community. They just really went out of the way to help me understand language, how to just be a good person overall. Mm-hmm. And because of that strong support system, kind of mm-hmm. like you, it yeah. kind of just lifted me through a lot of that chaos. And eventually, mm-hmm. I kind of found myself and started doing well and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, though, like, with that strong support system, like, some, uh, there, there was time, yeah, there was time when I felt like, uh, this support system, like, they're now asking too much from me, you know? Like, they're now asking me, like, to be, good every single time and without them realizing that like i have a life to live i have like my own journey or my, my own ambi- uh, ambitious to go after um no it's ambitious not my own ambition to go after um so like i have to be good person good christian um stop dancing certain type of like stop doing certain type of type certain type of dance move at school because it was a Christian school, which I mean, it was good, but at the same time, it's not good because you know, like when you're uh, dancing, it's, the state is yours. You have to feel free to move your 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 mass. You know, you know what I mean. So and once I they put like the limitation to what I can do as a dancer, it kind of like uh, slowed like my. Uh, I mean, I was not stressed about it, but just just gave me something to think about. Mm-hmm. In a way, yeah. Because I mean, those are part of your character, and that's the thing with religion most times too. Yeah. It just can rob you of a lot of those yeah. things. Yeah. It must not have been easy. What did you substitute in for those things to keep yourself motivated and whatnot? Uh, as far as dancing goes, or, or yeah, um, I I kept dancing though. You know, I kept dancing, and oftentimes I did a lot of like dancing competition, like in that area, round over area, like dancing uh, for like cash and stuff um but um i just 
stopped doing those like uh, that certain type of dance move at school and do their do them at home. I used to dance a lot. Mm. I, I I should go back to dancing more. What, what kind of dancing do you do exactly? Uh, Michael Jackson type. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Um, Afro Afro vibe, like you know what I mean. You are gone. Mm. Yeah. Did like did you learn those dance moves yourself, or was there someone in your family? I taught them myself. That's like, pretty impressive. Yeah. Right? They, actually, before I came to America, I used to listen to a lot of like we used not know me. We used to listen to a lot of like American rapper. But when I came to America, I, I realized a lot of American rappers. They use bad words in the songs and that like, that kind of like changed the, the entire aspect. So and then I started listening to Michael Jackson. I, I literally know a lot of Michael Jackson music, uh, songs. Mm. Wait, so like, was it when you came to America you should listen to Michael Jackson? Yeah. I mean, I, I used to listen to Michael, ja- to Michael Jackson back home too, but like when I came here, Michael Jackson was the only person that I was listening to. That's very, tr- like, how, how did you find Michael Jackson exactly? Cause there's a lot of artists. Michael Jackson is a way, is the king of the pop. Mm-hmm. Like, Everywhere in the Congo, everyone knows Michael Jackson, and we, 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 like, and especially when he made it do the moonwalk dance, like everybody, we're, we're trying to do that, that like that smooth wagwan moonwalk. You know, it's funny. Like in Haiti, in the yeah. orphanage where I yeah. was, like yeah. we knew Michael Jackson too. Like yeah. we actually watched movies with yeah. Michael Jackson and and him dancing. Yeah, it it just really shows you how powerful of a character he is. Yeah, I mean, bro, like. I don't, there are a lot of people that say a lot of things about Michael Jackson, but I mean, like, I embrace the music, I, I embrace, like, what, what he produced, like, he may, as a person, is a good person in his own, in his own way, but, like, I try not to judge people because of what other people, I try not to judge other people by what the media is saying, so I try to embrace what people offers the world you know mm-hmm. he, he did offer a lot of knowledge in his music a lot of like thoughtful like and his dance move bro they're cool that's the only word that can answer them mm. i th- i think we all as humans like have yeah. something too like to share mm-hmm. with the world and like you said but yeah. because we're judging them we yeah. just never really get to hear what yeah. they got to say yeah that's why that's why i keep saying like positivity over negativity bro is the key you know like people keep people I understand that things happen, but when we keep spreading negativity, how far will that take us? But, but, but if, if we're spreading positivity, we're going far. Mm. We're going to change this world. We're going to change this planet for good, for better. You know what I mean? Mm, slightly. I mean, if we're all trying to keep each other mo- motivated in the school. Because mm-hmm. we're, we're all stressing with something. Mm-hmm. Another, you know what I mean? Yeah, life is not perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you're going to be a dick to someone for no reason, like, yeah. how's that helping anybody? Not at all. Not, not at all. You listening, bro? Not at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to be kind. Yeah. yeah everyone. You, you got to be good, bro. <laughs> this is your boy talking with Roland. Rolando, right? Of course, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people call me a lot of things. Yeah. Ronald, Rolando, like, it's weird. Yeah. Like, and I'm just not picky, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, e- even if someone pronounced my name wrong, yeah. I know they're not trying to, so it's like, yeah. cool. Yeah. But Rolando, like, sound better, like, like when, when I pronounce it, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But. It's definitely a tricky <laughs> name, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. And... When you came to America, like you played soccer mm-hmm. here and in Congo, mm-hmm. um, were you a lot better than the other kids in the Congo or in, in America? In America, I, definitely <laughs> uh, way more better. Mm-hmm. I mean, pe- people were, were afraid of playing me though. Like <laughs> in my club team, a lot of people were afraid of like going against me, you know, because I, I was like built, you know, stuffed. But like uh, realistically, there were other people who were stronger than me, but they were just afraid of, like of going against me. Mm-hmm. And me, I was, so I, I noticed that people were there, so I took advantage of it. Like, I capitalized on my own strength to become a better, a better player, you know. What was your work ethic like that made you get so good? Um, honestly, though, I am not a gifted soccer player, but I put the work in, you know. Um, I mean, I've played with other people. This one person in, in particular, man, he was on my team. He is way more better, better than me. He barely puts the work in as far as, like, soccer practice goes. But when it was the time of the game, bro, that kid destroys. You have to, me, m- my first year in, uh, in America, there were like always, m- most of the time, um, two or three guys in me. But when this guy came, bro, 
five guys on him, bro. He can take them at once, destroys them. It was good, but that's what. I, I don't know if I answered your question. I, I kept going back, back and forth. Oh, you're good. Like, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, yeah. how often did you practice to get good? Uh, I mean, it's back home, like, we don't, we didn't have, like, this, like, um, organized team, you know? We, we, we had, like, uh, homemade soccer ball, which we call chibloom. It's, like, made of plastic back and stuff. So we, we, we played it, like, anytime. We didn't have, like, special, like, practicing. Um, until when I moved to this special village, uh, where I spent most of my, uh, childhood at, that's when we started, like, we organized a team trying to start, starting to play with, like, different, um, other teams, like, around the area, around the area. But we often practice, like, um, Monday to, um, Sunday. Damn. That's wow. back home, yeah. Seven days a week? Yeah. That's a lot, man. Yeah, but, but it's not as intense as it is in America, though, you know? You just, we, back home, we just go, Go for fun, you know. I but see. here it's way more intense. Okay, okay, yeah. I see. So it's kind of like a hobby in a sense back home. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and back home, if you tell people like, or if you tell your your parent like you wanna be like a footballer, they'll laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, they they don't think it's a it's a profession. That's very interesting. Yeah, they 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 rather a lot of African parents, especially those from villages area, they rather have you. Uh, go to school and become a teacher or mm-hmm. become like a um, journalist mm-hmm. or a doctor or things of yeah. that nature. Um, and like in the village, barely, but in the city, yeah, they want you to, to become a doctor. But like in the village, people don't have like the, the financial need, like they can uh, uh, afford for like uh, to finish like a doctor mm-hmm. or at, at, uh, at the medicine. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so in my area, it's more of like, um, Teacher, general, journalist, and a uh, commercial, huh. which is like business here in, in a way. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like I was gonna say, like in America, like mm-hmm. we see that too, like society just mm-hmm. tries and push everyone in this corner, mm-hmm. business, nurse, and oh, oftentimes like people are not really interested in that, but because society's mm-hmm. pushing it heavy, exactly, they yeah. follow that path, yeah. and eventually they realize they yeah. just wasted their life away in a mm-hmm, sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's called culture, you know. Mm. Yeah. You you don't feel pressured by the societal norms, do you? Um, no, no, no. You know, me. I I believe that every country and every culture has its own good. No, has the good and the bad. You know, but uh, you just have to choose what's the good for you. Is this good for you? If if it is good for you, you you go with what your culture is saying. But if it's not. Choose another way, you know. Life is not just about this and this. There is another way in between. Mm-hmm. That that's what I'm always try to to do. Try to choose what is good for me. Mm-hmm. Did someone like kind of push you towards that mindset? Or did you kind of cultivate it yourself? Um, I would say life experience. You know, I mean, growing up in Africa, it's not easy. You you, you have to stand up for yourself. And if you like. If I, if I do let myself to go with what I, my culture is saying, if I do let myself to go with what other people are saying, that will lead me nowhere. If I want to make a difference, I need to stand up for what is right. Oftentimes, for, for example, like when the police do come in the village to arrest somebody, the chief do benefit from it. And these often a police, they come there like with a mindset like of taking whatever that person has. And we, we don't want it. Like me as, as a boy scout, I noticed that that was wrong. So we started like, uh, like being like activists mm-hmm. in a way, trying to, to eliminate the bad, you know? So that's, but <laughs> I'm getting back, I'm going back and forth, you know? I don't, I don't know why. Oh, oh you're, you're good, man. No, no one's yeah. judging. Yeah. But I mean, it's not easy, you know what yeah. I mean? Like law enforcement, like trying to go against them, it's tough. Like you need a lot of support. Yeah, you know? yeah. And if, and if you don't have that, it's, yeah. you're going to fail most of the time. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Your story is just very interesting, you know what I mean? Like you come here, like no English, and mm-hmm. you learn the language. And you actually said you speak like five to six, six, six languages. Yeah, I, I just speak. English was my fifth. Okay. Back home, if I, if I were to rank them, I would say Chuluba, French, Lingala, or, or, or in Australia, Lingala, they were probably in the same, uh, line, um, and English. But now, like, I would rank English as 
third or like uh, second, just because like since I've been here, we only speak other different languages, so like I end up like losing a lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I still believe that whenever, with the moment that I go back home and start just speaking those languages, I'll be just like that. Yeah, yeah, like, well, because the environment, I mean, mm-hmm. if there's only one language going on, it's going to obviously yeah, try yeah. and shut the rest out. Yeah. But that's just so impressive, man. Like, five Thank you. languages. Thank you, yeah. I, I want to learn Chinese, though. I want to learn Chinese and, and, and Spanish. <laughs> yeah. What is your process like that helps you learn those languages? So, um. Uh, it, no, it, it's pretty much like being consistent. Like you have to, you know, me like when I learn language, I I have to set a time where I can go in the room myself to just talk. You know, repeat those words like out loud. Like when you don't say them out loud, you don't know like if you actually um, if you actually know it or if you don't. Mm-hmm. So it's better to practice it out loud by yourself. How many times a week would you actually practice? Like when I started learning English, it was pretty much every day. Yeah, I was always like, um, I, I often go in my room to just practice like out loud talking to myself. For a few hours or like um, an hour? This is not, I didn't have like a set like amount of hours because I were playing music here, dancing, and then pause to just talk English. So, so I would not like, and often that, that like the activity of talking and dancing often took me like an hour or an hour and a half. It depends on the day. Mm. Yeah. Wow. With all the things happening in your life, yeah. um, the dancing, the learning the language, mm-hmm. the soccer, um, that's a lot of stress, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's so many things to yeah. juggle. Mm-hmm. Did you like find yourself having to turn to like heavy substances to try and cope with all that? Um, no, 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 no. I mean, I came from a good like religious background and the school that I was going to was pretty like strict like on what should be allowed to uh, for the student to do, mm-hmm. and that mindset to just carry on, and I, I never done drugs. I, I do believe like the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, that's where I get all my strength, like to do what I do. Even though, I, even when I'm I'm stress I'm stressful, as long I recognize that that the joy of the Lord is my, my strength, I will be able to overcome that stress. Mm-hmm. You know? God's your tribe, in a sense. Y- yes, yes. I'm glad that works for you, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you pray like every day in a sense? Um, I used to a lot. Uh, I mean, now being in college, you know, you there's so much going on in college. You know, you gotta, you gotta. I'm, I'm not gonna sit, sit here, sit here and lie to you, but uh, I have not been praying as much as as, as I should. But um, it's just something that I'm working on, you know. And at my age right now, I'm like trying to find myself mm-hmm. in the world, you know, to be a better citizen. Of not just of Christian community, but like of all other religion and uh, the very citizen, citizen of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, God is first in my life, but I still wanted to be a good person to other people too, you know. I agree, I agree. Yeah. And sometimes, and that happens too, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you're not gonna always be juggling 10 balls. Mm-hmm. At some point, you gotta let them drop and just keep yeah. finding yourself. Working on it. Mm, but it was, yeah. this, it was definitely good talking to you, yeah, man. I good, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sure, sure. yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, boss. Yeah. Next time we'll do, we'll do good. For sure. Yeah. Um, that was the end of the interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it and there will be future ones to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to listen. You know what I mean? That's what's up. <laughs> That's your boy here at SMET. <laughs> uh.